Howdy folks, the uh, reason I don't use a push stick uh, in my collection here is, uh, watch this. <sighs> Whoa, what we just saw was a, uh, yeah, kickback. Uh, one push stick and just shoving it through the saw. <laughs> and it was done intentionally to create a video about kickback. Uh, I Push sticks. You should always be using, they tell me they should always be using two push sticks. I gave my push sticks away, don't like them. I am using push blocks. Uh, there is no push sticks in my you know, shop for the time being. I might make a couple of push sticks down the road at some point. Right now, this is what I have is, is these type of uh, blocks. Now, this one here is an oddity because it was really, I made this for a uh, planer joiner uh, machine that I was using at the time. I sold it, don't have it in here anymore. And uh, it has a quarter of an inch step at the back of it here. And I guess a lot of fellas were asking me how to, you know, how to do that. It's, you know, uh, first off, don't do this for your table saw. This is really not a table saw tool. I use it on the table saw, but you have to keep the blade really low, as you can see why. Let's see if I can, if I can get you in here. Let's get you down here on the saw a little bit closer so we take a good look at these push blocks and we'll talk about how to make that crazy step. So each of the push blocks has a purpose and from scrap lumber you can make all the push blocks, you know, anything you need and it'll make your work safer. So that's a cool thing. Now, this has only a quarter of an inch uh, step in it. So when you're coming up on the saw with it, uh, with a quarter inch material, you're going to go right on through. Nothing's going to happen that's going to go wrong. This, this one here, I just want to show you these. <clears throat> this is deep. And when you come up on the saw, all of a sudden, bang, you hit the table. So you have to be aware of that. And that's why this is used for specific cuts, but I wouldn't use it, I say I wouldn't use it for this. Now, this one here is not very safe. It's not a very good idea. I could do, I do need to make this type of situation out of a piece of, you know, two by four or something. But as far as catching, it doesn't catch the table and it allows me to, you know, control the piece. And, and once I'm pushing the piece through, look at how much, you know, I can steer it, you know, whatever I need to do. Uh, also, I can use this as a secondary or as a push block, if you want to call it, or push stick sort of thing, where I can actually, you know, hold on to the lumber a little bit if that's what I need to do. This one here, I put 80, uh, 60, 60 grit. Uh, sandpaper and glued it to the bottom. This is off a 3D printer and it's just sort of a knockoff of a, the idea of a Microsoft, uh, I think it's micro jig uh, gripper. It's kind of a knockoff of it. The blade has to be fairly low to go through here, which is a good thing that keeps me from putting my blade up too high. <laughs> but also it gives me fantastic uh, control over like a sheet of, of plywood like this where, I mean, look at this thing. I, I can steer this thing or do whatever I need with it, but it has this little tongue back here. Now, that tongue, let's come back here, could and does catch the table. So again, you have to be aware of it. So you can't put this on until you're up about here before you start you know, running it through the table saw, through the blade. So good and bad. Now, why do, why do I mention two by four? Now, let's take a, quick, take a quick look at that. Get over here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the height of the blade is going to vary on projects that you're doing. And if I'm doing something that's low, like a quarter inch plywood or something like that, look at this. This, this is putting your hands really dangerously way too close to that blade. Don't like it. Don't want it. I guess the worst case scenario would be, what if this thing uh, broke or slipped and fell over or something? I end up in the saw blade. Not pretty at all. So when you make a push block, you're best to take a piece of scrap, like a two by four or something, and try to go up high because by the time you put your handle on and you get your hands up here, you're a lot further away from that blade and I, that feels more comfortable to stay away from that blade. So when I come up through, I'm coming past the blade, this sort of thing, look how far away my, my hands are, you know, and that's why I'm saying a two by four is a good, you know, probably a good piece of scrap to use to make a, a system like this. Now, the other thing question, and I'll have to clean this table off a little bit. I'm gonna show you how I made that, how that made that instep because the other thing you can do is uh, you could make, you could just do something really simple, cut this to about nine inches, put whatever kind of handle on it you like. You can cut a little pattern out for a handle and screw it into the block of wood or something like that if you wanted to. And at the back, you could simply cut yourself a small piece of lumber like this, 
Uh, measured out about a quarter of an inch deep, so it's no more than a quarter for you know most projects anyways, and drive a couple of wood screws in back here, and you'd have that step. You don't have to do this other process by any means. There's no reason to do it. I don't think so, but I just thought I would get a little fancy with this one and, and do it the hard way. What's the hard way? Now the hard way is I set it up like that and mark where I want the step to stop, right back in here. I set this to quarter of an inch and then I start running it through the saw. Now I run it through back here first and then slowly walk my saw over taking a piece out at a time. When I get over to this side, at some point I have to put a quarter of an inch piece of wood through the a slat, you know, through here to support it so I can finish that last little bit of cut. You really can't see it much, so I did sand it a little bit, but there's actually little tiny grooves through here where it, went, where it went through the saw over and over again like this at a quarter of an inch height to the, you know, to the saw blade to get all of that material out of the way so I'd have this little step. That was kind of fancy, but I had a lot of time on my hands at that point and there really wasn't much else going on. Uh, watch the handle designs. I saw something on the internet just a short time ago I don't like and I'll, sh I'll have to uh, Well, I'll have to create something but uh, the fella had a push block Cut out of some material and he had a handle that was like this where your hand would be like that And of course we'd cut that off and angle that and glue it into the block or whatever And he had actually opened this up and put it in there I didn't like it because the handle was on an angle this way, creating some really weird uh, angle that I'm not quite that crazy about. And if the handle were to break, and again, your hand would come down and it might roll over into the famous saw blade. So if you see that one out there, uh, I would not build that type of push block. I would put a decent, good, strong handle that you can trust on top of the block because it, you do not want anything to ever happen to that handle. If it breaks or something, it could put you in a lot of danger really quickly. We got a draw today, man. Yeah, we got a draw. Let's, let's get off of this. An important announcement right now. Uh, starting today, this week, oh yeah, Taco Bell has brought back Mexican pizza. Finally, yes. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Taco Bell. Now, this week we're giving away the photo tool kit, which I said before, showed it last week, it's reviewed it, it's got really nice quality. If you win this tool and you get it, you're gonna be like, wow, he's not kidding. That really does have some quality. It's their quality tools in a nice kit that is a pretty heavy little kit. But uh, let's get, the, I got the tickets, throw them in the bucket, and we're gonna mix the bucket up real good with all the entries. It was about a hundred tickets this week, so that's that's not bad. Uh, more more the merrier. I really don't care. Uh, after today, as a matter of fact, the uh, the email box once again uh, two o'clock this afternoon was to, deleted. Then we went into the deleted files and deleted the deleted files to make sure the the, the email box is not only clean. There is no trace of anything that came in in the past week for entries for the uh, toolkit. So. And then we're going to go on to the next item, which is what we're giving away this week, which is a pretty cool item. Uh, let's grab a ticky, take that one, and da 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 da. Ooh, boy, this uh, state's starting to get to me. <sighs> Sean, and I'm going to screw this up. I'm going to say it's pin, pin and pin, pin on hills. Sean, Pinnon Hills, California, yay, yay. <laughs> Sean, you got yourself a really nice tool kit. I don't even remember seeing that name come across the wire there when we were downloading to the software package to make these tickets up, but uh, congratulations. Pinnon Hills, California, I wonder where that is. I have no idea. Hmm. Anyway, congratulations, Sean. Wow, and thanks for entering, of course. Always thank everybody. Keith, John, George, thank everybody. Henry, all of you, thanks for entering again this week. And let's uh, let's close this out. We're gonna have to burn all these tickets because like I said, I don't believe in handing any of this information over to anybody, no third party, no nothing. So we'll get rid of all this. And then we're gonna start the new one. And again, uh, let's see, let's find that product. Yeah, this is probably one of the few times 
and there will be a few, I guess. Uh, we're giving something away that was sent in to do on the show for review, and then uh, we would give it away. So here's the situation. The person that was involved sent this over to us as a, a representative of marketing of the company. And we always do our background checks on everything anyways. And we quickly discovered this person was just simply set up with an affiliate account, just trying to make a quick buck and send something to a YouTuber, such as me, to review something and sell it for them that they would get the money for it. And I sort of went a little against the grain on that one because they were misrepresenting themselves. I guess you could say I caught them in a lie and uh, they weren't too happy about it. And neither was I because I, I didn't think that was right. So we've got the tool here and there is no review. In fact, we're not even gonna talk about the uh, manufacturer. I'm just gonna simply uh, give this tool away this week. So this is gonna be our draw for the week. It's from a, the company's manufacturer's name was Pod. Uh, the supplier manufacturer, anything like that, we don't know. It's an automotive jump pack. It's really small, it's very heavy. It retailed for about $110 apparently or something in that range. And here's the unit itself, plus there's the jumper cables that plug in, and then you can put on your uh, RV, your tractor, your lawnmower, your car, truck, whatever it is you need to do a jump to. It also has a USB, and it'll charge up some other things. Comes with the brand new uh, cable here that plugs into it to charge it up off a USB, and then you have this awesome little battery pack that can start your car or truck, whatever. So it's a pretty neat little item, but uh, we won't do any review, testing, nothing on it because like I said, uh, there was some uh, mis, uh, misrepresentation going on and I'm kind of against the grain on that one because of the way the person approached us as uh, being you know, head of the marketing department or something and it turns out now they had nothing to do with the company at all. They're just simply trying to make a buck. So we'll just run over top of them with a truck, right? We'll just give this away, no review. And uh, so I'll put this all back in the box. I sort of ripped the box a little bit, so there'll be some tape and some uh, a lot of quirky looking tape on this one. Now, <laughs> how do we get on this? Well, <clears throat> to be on the draw for next Thursday, you simply write an email to, and I'll put the address, I'll stand over here, how's that? And I'll put the address right over there, and it's, it's CNT, CT Rewards at gmx.com. In the subject of your uh, email, or yeah, the title or subject of your email, just write pods, P-O-D. And then uh, in the actual body of the email, just like we've done in the past, just like a postal return address where just your name and your address and that's it. That's all I'm asking. That way we can mail this out to you, whoever the winner is. Uh, there was a couple this past week that just sent me their name with no address. Or in uh, a couple of cases too, they also sent an address with no name. <laughs> It's like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it is what it is, right? And it might be because of a cell phone or something. I can understand the cell phone thing with trying to, you know, dial that junk in. But uh, yeah, so we'll send that over. And on Thursday, we will make up tickets and we'll draw. And some lucky fellow will have this pod uh, automotive jumper. This looks like a really nice unit. So I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with uh, people that uh, misrepresent when they're asking to have something, you know, tools that are shown on the show. I've got this company sitting right back here, big huge name, they're real, their representatives talks to me, I get to interact with the company a little bit and you know, that's a cool thing. But this situation here uh, got uh, almost ugly a little bit because uh, we discovered there was a problem. Anyways, hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools this week. Mm. Please like, share, subscribe. Over and out.